What Jesus accomplished on the cross on our behalf calls for a closer look at the pattern and purpose of sacrifice that our Father commanded the Israelites. Then we can understand just how perfectly Jesus fulfilled every aspect of that pattern. Every Israelite was required to bring an animal to be sacrificed as judgment for his sins. If someone sins by doing something against any of the commands of God concerning things which should not be done, he is guilty, even if he is unaware of it, and he bears the consequences of his wrongdoing. He must bring a ram without defect from the flock to the priest for a guilt offering. The priest will make atonement concerning the error which he committed, and he will be forgiven. It is a guilt offering. He is certainly guilty before the Lord. Leviticus chapter 5, verses 17 through 19. The animal to be sacrificed had to be perfect, free from any defect. That's because our awesome and holy God deserves only the best. And because he's so holy that anything defective can't be tolerated in his presence. Every Israelite sinned against God by virtue of his very sin nature. And the penalty for sin is death. The animal that was offered became the substitute for the death that was deserved by the person who brought the offering. The person who brought the offering would place his hands on the animal and confess his sins. In this way, his sins were transferred to the animal. And because the animal is now the sinner, it had to die because the penalty for sin is death. The person who had transferred the guilt of his sins onto the animal then had to kill the animal himself. That act really brought home the seriousness of sin as he watched this animal die at his own hands. That innocent animal became the bearer of its killer's sins as his substitute. It took great trust and humility that this sacrificed animal would pay the debt that this person owed for his sin. But what joy that the one who'd brought the offering could walk in reconciliation and fellowship with his Lord. Think of the grace of our God to provide such an amazing way to cover over the guilt of sin. But this is the process of atonement. Jesus the perfect sacrifice. Now let's bring together for you some of the things we've been sharing in the past segments. First, the new covenant that we have with our Father is ratified by the shed blood of Jesus. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. As Peter relates, he was a lamb without spot or defect. Jesus substituted his life for ours to suffer the death sentence we deserve. And that punishment encompassed both our sin nature as well as the multitude of sins we've committed. Remember, the Israelite who brought the animal offering had to take ownership of his own sin guilt through confessing those sins. In the same way, we too have to own the depth of our own depravity and need for forgiveness. Everyone has sinned and fallen short of God's glory and holiness we all deserve punishment as judgment for our transgressions. Each of us has to recognize in our hearts how we violated our Lord's standards. We have to respond to the Spirit's conviction to turn from our sins and come to our Father. Our Father examined the heart of each person to check for sincerity. Just as today, God refuses the half-hearted, the person who intends to commit the same sins again. There is no atonement for intentional sin. For if we deliberately continue to sin after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but only the terrifying prospect of judgment, of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26 and 27. In order to be received by our Father, we need the same wholeheartedness as the man who brought the animal sacrifice to the priest. And we must trust that Jesus, our sacrifice, has paid the penalty that our guilt deserves. Because Jesus, through his own death, exchanged his life for ours, our Father has forgiven us. We're not only reconciled to him, we've become his children. But now in Christ Jesus, you who formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. 
Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. Just as the Israelites had been chosen as a people and set apart to serve God's purposes as a kingdom of priests, we too are set apart to serve our King. Listen to the purposes our Lord has set for those who are in union with Jesus. But you are a chosen people, the King's priests, a holy nation, a people for God to possess. Why? In order for you to declare the praises of the one who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. That was beautiful. When you trust in the sacrifice of Jesus, the way is open for you to enter into a covenant relationship with our Father. In the next two video segments, we'll connect the important foundations we've already laid. The fear of God, apperception, covenants, and sacrifice. First, we'll discuss the stipulations of the covenant the earliest church embraced. Then we'll cover the indwelling Holy Spirit, the seal of our consummated relationship with our Father. We look forward to you joining us as we discuss these important foundations that our Father is restoring to His people.